working again. I am so sorry, everyone. Is that going to work? It's working again. I am All so right. sorry. All right. I think everyone. we're back. Uh, gonna work? Go ahead and it's mute Twitch. So we should be back. Uh, I apologize. It seems like we're having some network issues here. I had to let Chris go so I could hopefully get the stream back up. But we were just about to say goodbye to him anyway. For those that uh, didn't get a chance to um, have your questions answered, feel free to um, uh, tweet Chris directly. Uh, he's at Chris Straub uh, on Twitter. Or you can visit him at PAX South next week because uh, he will be there along with the rest of... Uh, the C Team, Dice Camera Action, the Idol Champions crew. Um, if you're coming to Pack South, come hang out with us because we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, but let's. Oh, I don't have a version without this. Let's make this go away. I'm going to mess everything up. That's okay. Oh, here we go. I can do this. Bop, bop, bop. All right, cool. Uh, I don't know if you noticed here, but. Uh, here at Codename Entertainment, especially when Chris is in charge of the live stream. We're just going to get it done live. Uh, that's a little laggy because I don't have this up. And uh, so let's get back to some questions, everybody. Um, so sorry for the connection issues. Thank you so much, everyone, for sticking with us. Um, it was a lot of fun to talk to Chris Straub. Uh, I say goodbye to him during the uh, intermission uh, where we had the network problems. Um, he said thanks to everyone for coming to hang out and chat. Uh, you can come visit him at PAX South at his booth. He'll be there all day for the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And we'll have a dedicated signing of Idol Champion cards at um, PAX South at his booth. So if you swing by our booth at PAX South, uh, and I apologize, I don't have the times handy right now, but swing by our booth. We're going to have a schedule up where you can see all the different places where you can get uh, autographs from your favorite champions. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. So for those that are in San Antonio next week, I hope you come by and hang out with us. Uh, Michelle, Eric, and I are going to be there. Uh, we're going to be sharing uh, space with the uh, our friends at Table Titans. Uh, so come meet Binwin. Uh, we'll have signings with the DCA crew, with Acquisitions Incorporated, with C-Team. We're just we're going to be all over. It's going to be a fun con, and uh, I hope you'll stop by and say hi because we would love to chat with you. So let's get back to some questions. Hang on. <sighs> Too many windows. This is the last time they let me stream. Okay. Mr. Spoiler questions. I guess that's me. Am I Mr. Spoiler? I think I am. Uh, when do we have... Do we have an official release date for the event for Chris? Uh, we have in a release week uh, because we are... Because we are pushing our content onto multiple platforms. Um... We need to make sure all the platforms are locked in before we release the new content. So our target is always um, around the middle of the week. Uh, we shoot for Wednesday normally. Sometimes that slips. Um, but I'm pretty confident that next week uh, we should hit on Wednesday. And so you should be able to get into Midwinter. Uh, unlock Regis from the Legends of Dritz novels. He goes right here in slot two. Oops, going to prioritize that window. <gasps> there we go. Uh, Regis is right here. Hey, bud. Oh, stuck button there. Hey, buddy. All right, so we'll get Regis out there. Oh, sorry, Denar. Come on. Where'd you go? I can't see half the screen, so I think he's in my formation. I just can't see it. Chris is taking your questions and possibly spoiling more than just Cathris. Well, if Erica said so, I guess I have uh, carte blanche. So let's get into it. All right. Uh, official release date for Cthulhu next week. Coming out with Midwinter uh, and Regis. And uh, it's going to be a fun event. I think you all will enjoy it. Uh, question from Candyman. What slot does Cthulhu take? He's in slot one. He's uh, with Brunor and Deacon. Do you plan to expand the Helm Adventure in the near future and give it tier two? Yes, uh, in the coming weeks, there will be another Dragon Heist campaign. Uh, and I believe, uh, don't quote me or hold me to it, um, but I believe the plan is to release new blessings with the update to the Dragon Heist campaign. Uh, let's see. Does, <laughs> does Neris get a shadow sword when mentored by the shadow demon? Uh, no, she does not, uh, but that would be pretty cool. A pretty cool interaction. 
Um, how to use controller on a PC, uh, Adsen 0228. So when you're on a PC and playing on Steam, um, you can turn on gamepad mode, and that's what I'm playing right now. Right now we're on our streaming PC and I've got the gamepad mode enabled uh, with a cool Xbox controller. And if you go into the settings, it'll look a little bit different on the regular uh, PC menu, but you'll be able to, uh, where are we? Uh, displaying gamepad UI mode. So if you select that in the main UI, it'll close the game when you reopen it. If you have a controller connected, it will uh, show in gamepad mode. So you'll be able to uh, play it with a controller, which is pretty cool. I like it. Uh, and the best part about playing a controller, ready, ready? You can just do all the upgrades all at once. It's so much fun. You just hold it down, just boom, 510. All right, Jarlax, we'll get in there. Do your thing. Um, and I believe, because we had two intros, I don't think that I uh, mentioned on the revamp, but uh, I'm here because Dylan is out today. Dylan is sick. Uh, he will be back next week, I promise, hopefully with less technical problems. Um, but we, uh, we hope Dylan's feeling better and uh, uh, we're excited to get him back in the office. Nocturne614 asks, uh, they would love more high-end content, don't have anything to do anymore at their level. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, we just released, um, don't have anything more, I just released two new adventures. We just released two adventures to Tomb Uh They are high-end adventures, very challenging, especially Valindra at the end of uh, The Lost Love. Um, she goes into her wit lich form and throws a fireball down and it's super awesome. Adam Kosh did an amazing job on, uh, on Valindra. Uh, so we're continuing to put out content. We put out content every week. Uh, we try to mix it up between content for newer players, content for end game players. Um, so stick with us. We're going to continue to have more content, um, and uh, and we'll have a lot of fun stuff for you to play through. Uh, let's see. <laughs> what sequence do we unlock when we discover the correct wall snake click sequence? That's awesome. It's funny because uh, when I wrote the uh, when I wrote the art order for the uh, steps of Oralunga and the little snake holes that they jump out of, uh, I didn't think they'd be. At, and this is not at all a, a slight on Alexis because she constantly blows me away with her work. Um, but I didn't think the the snakes would be as enticing because as soon as they pop out, I want to click on them. I want to click on them like a distraction. Uh, there is not a hidden sequence that suddenly unlocks ownership of CNA games or anything. Uh, those are not distractions. Don't go crazy. Um, but they do pop out, and uh, and we thought that was a cool addition to uh, that level. And I keep closing my window because there's too many things open. All right, I'm going to put it right here. Uh, do bounty contracts drop Kathris coins when he's in the formation? That's a great question. Uh, one of the cool things about locking the build early is, um, or one of the problems with locking the build early is that I have been super duper busy heads down on other projects and I haven't had a chance to balance test Kathris. So uh, let's find out together. All right, uh, here we go. Inventory, contracts. And uh, let me just throw a disclaimer out there before we do this. Um, uh, we're still balancing Kathris. So uh, anything you see on the screen is subject to change before uh, next Wednesday's release. But let's see what we got. Here we go. Inventory. Large bounty contract. Oh, we got Kathris Goobers and a Shadow Demon. Oh, he's helping out Regis. Look at him go. So yeah, Regis is uh, doing 44% of the DPS. Go, Regis, go. Uh, let's see. Will the remaining champions for the Waffle Crew and or C team have team abilities like Wolfgar? Um, one or more of each character, or my plan uh, is one or more of each character from an affiliation group uh, will have something that um, ties to the other affiliation, to the other characters in the affiliation. Um, specifically because those are what I call build around me abilities. They introduce the concept of affiliations and the fact that you want all these friends together. Um, and that's, uh, that's my goal. Uh, so right now, Kathris does not have an, uh, an affiliation ability that would buff um, Acquisitions Incorporated members. Mostly it's because there's 
only two C team members right now. We got two more to go. Uh, we got Rosie and we got uh, Walnut, and uh, we're gonna be excited about working with those. Um, yeah, so we uh, we've already chatted with uh, with Kate and uh, and Amy, and it was an amazing conversation. We're super excited about getting the rest of the C team uh, in the game. Uh, just like we're excited about uh, getting Paulton into the game. Uh, we should hopefully have some news on Paulton soon, because uh, I need that last bard. I need that drunken bard flying around my formation. Uh, what are CNE's goals for 2019? Um, continue putting out awesome content to uh, keep you guys engaged and let you have fun in our game. Uh, quality of life updates more often. Um, and uh, and continuing to uh, to support all our different platforms. Uh, it's been amazing to see the players uh, give us feedback on the Xbox and PlayStation versions of the game. Um, we're uh, we're still chunking through the the data on the different play styles between different platforms so that we can help to uh, offer content and resources both for new players, old players, and players on specific platforms that may have different play styles. Um, hmm. Got a little glitch there. Uh, the rotting corpses on level 58 slash 8 are disappearing for some reason. Uh, Erica, if you could pass that on to the dev team. Um, question from Plus Pay, Press Play for Games on Mixer. What are the best tips for beginners slash starters to feel like less of a grind? So for beginners, um, I would focus your gem purchases on... Um, on silver chests at first to help to uh, fill out equipment on all of your champions uh, and then move on to gold chests. I would um, not be scared about resetting. Um, if you're stuck at your wall for more than an hour or two, reset and start a new adventure because um, every time the game is set up so that every time as you gain gold um, and you reset, all that gold turns into divine favor, which then will let you go further and further and further each time. So um, don't be afraid to reset. Don't be afraid to start again, even if you're just so close. Like you've tried everything and, and maybe if you just leave it running for a day or two, you'll get enough gold to do it. Just reset. You'll probably end up getting to that uh, goal quicker because you'll uh, you'll jump back in with a bigger increase in gold find, so you'll be able to ramp up that uh, leveling up of all your champions. And ooh, I guess it's time to level up some of my champions because they just got kicked out of that adventure. So Cthulhu, let's go to the next level because we've got Tentacular Spectacular to throw it, people. Uh, let's go increase the damage behind. Ruby weakness magic and Oath of Vengeance. There we go. Okay, that's a little bit better. Oh, and I'm going to move Regis in front. Oh, look at that DPS increase. So satisfying when you get a big boost. All right, let's go to some more questions. Mm -mm -mm. What's the next character? Oh, man, that's going to be tough. That's going to be tough if I'm going to announce this, but the next character, all right, here it comes. Are you ready? The next champion releases next week. His name is Kathris Draub. He's a Drow Warlock, uh, and he's from the C team, and he's super duper awesome, and I think you're really going to like him. Uh, plus, he drops these really cool pink violet goobers um, that he takes for himself, and it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Let's see. Uh, Snow815 asks, is that a chicken snake around his neck? No, that is not a chicken snake. Uh, that is a tentacle. So his ability is tentacular spectacular, and he opens up his cloak to reveal this inky blackness here, and tentacles sprout out and attack people. And so we've uh, envisioned that ability like this. Here we go, you ready? Three, two, one, tentacular spectacular. So he opens the chest, he's like, Wah! jazz hands, and then all these tentacles sprout up and do a lot of damage, and so it's a lot of fun. Um, but Ligati is the tentacle around his neck, and it's a tentacle that has stuck around for a while, uh, and so he keeps him as a pet. Uh, and so Ligati is one of the equipment items. In fact, let's uh, let's take a look at some of these Kathris equipment items. I wanted to do this with Chris, um, but uh, due to technical difficulties, 
Uh, we didn't get to do that, so let's open up a Cthris chest. Oh, no! Adam added uh, little tentacles to the um, uh, top of the chest, and for those that haven't noticed, uh, Adam enjoys uh, leaving little Easter eggs right here um, with different chests. So when you open a chest, look at what happens. Sometimes the little, like, pow thing pops out, and here we've got tentacles coming from inside the chest, because nothing says reach in and grab gold than uh, scary tentacles from the Black Void. So we got we got the pouch of acquisitions. Uh, Walnut told me I have to wear this as part of the uniform. Uh, the glyph of mysteries reduces the cooldown on his attack by 14 seconds, and some dark, illimitable alphabet. Sorry, that word was tough as far at first. And velvet, the softest ghost. So the 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 background behind velvet, uh, and I'm sure I'm going to butcher it, uh, is that velvet is. Uh, in the Unseen Servant that he casts with Unseen Servant, uh, but he didn't like that no one could see them. Uh, so he took a piece of cloth and put it on top, and that has eventually grown. And, uh, and so now you have Velvet under a rug doing their thing. Uh, and I'm not gonna, I'm, uh, am I gonna? Yeah. Uh, so one of the variants actually has Velvet in the formation uh, playing around with Cthris, uh, and it's a pretty fun uh, variant. So I hope you'll check it out next week at the Midwinter Update. Let's see what else do we have. We have, ah, there he is, Legati. Uh, and the flavor text is, has it accepted me as its new master? And we've got another Velvet, the softest ghost. Uh, all right, got a couple more chests. Let's see what we can get. The animated bag of holding, a level up on the uh, previous version. A bag with its own aspirations, novel. The rumpled ro robe of recognition. Recognition begets knowledge, memory, truth. Do you have any truths for me? And it'll be a lot better when it's Chris reading it in a Cthris voice. Uh, the Tome of Forgotten Lore. If I've forgotten it. If I have it here, is it still forgotten? I did a first pass on uh, some of the equipment items from uh, Cthris, and I wasn't really happy with a lot of it. Um, whenever I write flavor text for a streaming character, I always feel like I'm... Uh, I always feel a little hesitant. It's almost like you're writing someone else's story. Um, so I love, love, love when the content creators can come back and give me meaningful feedback on some of that. Because a lot of it's like I'm trying to add Easter eggs. I'm trying to throw my knowledge of the character in. Uh, but uh, with Chris, when he when he saw that, he added so many cool little deep cuts uh, into the flavor and just made it sound really a lot more like Cthris, which is super cool and I really appreciate it. And now we've got the epic version of Velvet, the high pile version of Velvet. A thread count beyond mortal ken. Dry clean only. Uh, we've got a duplicate glyph of mysteries and rumple robe of recognition. Do we have another chest? We do! Let's see. Ooh, the arcane focus of the Ur. My eyes have opened the unfathomable mole Eidolon. Some more robes of recognition. Ooh, the tetrathonic, tetra, tetra thanatic key. All knowledge begins with these four lines. I think that might be all the items. We got a duplicate. Ooh, the codex of the horde person. Written strange tongues that include pivot tables. Hmm, who knew? All right. And that's all your... Uh, wow, dude, this level is just kicking my booty. All right, he's dead. Yeah, everyone's dead. Oh, is everyone dead? Oh. I think I gotta get some Neris in here. All right, you're gonna do that since we're getting our booties handed to us. Get Strix going in. Moonbeam. Oh, that's not a good place. You get to go up. Oh, because I took Strix away. Ew. Buttons are hard. Buttons are hard when trying to juggle a bunch of things. So let's continue. And let's get back to some of those questions. Uh, will there? Will we go into Torm after Barovia? Will where will we go in Torm after Barovia? That's a good question. Um, I honestly have no idea. Uh, I've got the story arc for Barovia in my head, and um, I want to see where that ends up before I figure out where we're going next because I think it's gonna have. Um, 
I think it's going to be interesting to see how the characters respond after dealing with Strahd, because uh, Strahd is just not your average villain. And I think those that have uh, played through uh, Visions of Strahd, the variant where he taunts all the champions, uh, can see where we're going with uh, with how Strahd's trying to turn the champions against each other. Uh, so I'm in the middle of uh, I'm in the middle of uh, working with our writer Scott on the next. Um, uh, Grand Tour Adventure, uh, which has us going down to the Amber Temple, uh, but we're still going to be in Barovia for a couple more Grand Tour updates. But after that, we're going to go back to the Sword Coast and continue walking around. Uh, let's see. Any update on the eventual solution for over-leveled slot 6 items getting their levels redistributed? Uh, no, no update at the moment, but it is on our to-do list. Uh, everything... Everything at the end of last year was all focused on uh, shortening our timetable and schedule so we could launch on consoles and also get Winter Shield out on all consoles um, uh, with uh, limited overtime and limited uh, really burning people out. Uh, and it was fun because we got there and at the end of the year I was like, yeah, that's great. We're so ahead. This is awesome. Uh, we can kind of relax for a day or two. And then we came back after the new year and I'm like, wait, what do you mean you need more stuff? What do you mean you have a turnover in a week? So um, we're, we're still spinning up into the new year and, and getting getting used to the content flow again. But we'll be looking into some of those things uh, in, the, in the coming weeks and months. Let's see. Why, after playing for a while, if I restart the game, do I get a cannot connect to stream error? to Steam error. I have to reboot to get it to connect again. That sounds like it's an underlying issue with your Steam client um, because the game loads and looks at your Steam client connection. And I've found a lot of times I have Steam logged in here and in another room. And if I'm trying to override Steam to make it work, sometimes it thinks it's still open over here and it says it can't connect. So what I would suggest is to uh, reinstall your Steam client or see if there's a repair option on your Steam client. Cause it sounds like there's an issue uh, with the Steam client connecting to the Steam servers, because that's what we use as the backbone uh, to connect to everything. Still waiting on that hold to rapid click feature on the regular version with a mouse. Yeah, me too. Um, we're going to be, as, as we get into Q1 and Q2, we're going to be looking to... Um, Add some cool features to the regular version. Uh, we're, we want to add the portraits from this, uh, from the the console version into the main version, so that way you get the better view of the characters. Since Adam and Alexis worked so hard on these awesome portraits, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna look at a lot of different things. So uh, familiar formation saves, uh, more information for you, making things easier. Um, and uh, and trying to integrate something like the rapid click feature. Uh, question for Mars: Current soft level cap on Cathris, just like I told you later, Mars. You gotta wait till next week. Uh, no, I like I said, I've been heads down um, on a couple of other projects, and I haven't uh, done the balancing on Cathris. Um, Justin did all the balancing, so I do not know what the soft cap is for Cathris. What is one a question for Mars? What is one mechanic for Cathris that didn't make the final cut? That's a really good question. Hmm, and something that I'll have to think about paying attention to in the future. What we the way we do designs are it's an iterative process, and a lot of times we'll throw ideas at the table and just kind of erase them fairly quickly. Um, so I don't trying to think of one that uh, we threw a bunch of ideas out. Not, of them, not a lot of them were fully fleshed out. We were trying to get to um, what the core of the character was and the, and the um, specialties. And I can't remember any off the top of my head. Um, but if I do remember one later today when I get back to my desk, uh, I'll post it in, on Discord. And for those of you that are new to the game, uh, we have a Discord community on discord.gg slash idle champions that you can go to. Uh, it's got a whole ton of uh, player feedback and information. Um, Mars, one of our community leaders, has done an amazing job uh, making um, sort of self-imposed variants that you can play against 
uh, and time your run and 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 uh, and challenge yourself in in learning different uh, champions. So uh, it's a cool option to look into, and at the very least, it's a great community. They're really good about uh, helping people along, especially early in the game before you have really that deep. Uh, formation strategy uh, mastery. So I definitely recommend checking it out, even if you're playing on console, um, because I think it's uh, it's a great resource. It's a great community. Uh, the devs are there often answering questions, and that's normally the first way that we can see uh, feedback on the characters. And so we really appreciate that community, and uh, I'd highly recommend it if you're playing the game and you have questions. Uh, question, when will we be able to use multiple blacksmiths at a time? Uh, we hear you. Uh, I promise Erica is bringing that up in daily meetings daily, um, and uh, it is on our list to do. Um, we're working hard to uh, keep things flowing on our weekly content schedule, and uh, I'm going to be working with uh, Justin to slot in some time for uh, clearing out those quality of life items that uh, that have been bugging us for a while. It's just it's a matter of resources. Uh, we're working on a bunch of different things at once, and we need to prioritize things. Um, and we hear you, and we understand that multiple blacksmithing contracts is a thing that you want, and we will deliver. Uh, just got to be patient with us. Uh, when will we see graphics update to the UI on PC? Um, the plan is in the current month, in the coming months. Our goal uh, with the uh, gamepad UI was we released it on Steam as a way to, uh, one, offer Steam players the ability to play with uh, gamepads, but also as a, as a way to test um, how the UI was working or would work for console players. And so we, uh, we invited a couple of uh, our more vocal uh, players into the alpha early of the gamepad uh, UI. They gave us a lot of great feedback. We rolled it out across all of our Steam players. We've gotten a lot more great feedback. We're continuing to get feedback from our console players. So we're going to continue to uh, revise and update and, uh, and, and keep polishing this game uh, for many years. So um, updating the graphics in the UI on the regular uh, PC version is definitely on our agenda. I don't think it's going to be as, um, as big of an overhaul as the gamepad UI. Um, but uh, we're definitely going to be integrating some of the things that we found uh, players are really enjoying about the gamepad UI. Uh, <laughs> Evil Sales says, I assume that Paulton is already in the game, but he's invisible. He's not invisible. He's just drunk on the bottom of his slot, and so he's not selectable yet. He'll get there. He's just got to sober up a little bit. I'm assuming uh, Evelyn will pour some cold water on him eventually, and, uh, and he'll come in the game. Uh... Uh, question from Epic Gizmo 519 um, more of a statement but uh, I feel like the new player experience for unlocking characters is a very slow burn until time gates come up um, you're right I mean it, it it's meant to be a slow burn uh, we don't want you to consume all the content in a week and a half um, so there's a new event every three weeks uh, that runs for 10 days. And since we're in year two of the events, each of those events has two brand new champions that you can unlock. In addition to that, we've got an evergreen champion in each of the first two campaigns, Tomb of Annihilation and uh, Grand Tour. We're gonna be introducing more evergreen champions this year too. Uh, and those will be unlockable by completing uh, difficult variants. Um, but, you know, it's an, it's an on-ramping process and it's easy um, it's easy to just want more, um, but that's one of the reasons why we introduced the time gate system. We wanted a, a way for free to play players to, uh, to collect them all. We wanted a way for you to be able to uh, grab that champion that was from two events ago that you just missed because you know life gets in the way. Um, so we're gonna be, uh, the time gates are the best way to um, collect older champions at the moment. Um, and then when the new events come around, just make sure you unlock those new champions, get some gear for them, and, uh, and we're going to continue to bring out new champions. But we want to make sure that we don't, we don't flood players because learning two new champions over 10 days' time is a little challenging. Next year when we have three champions, that'll be a little bit more challenging. Uh, we don't want to force players to drink from the fire hose and unlock three or four champions at once because 
you'll miss some of the coolness of each champion. Um, so uh, I'll take that note under advisement, but I, I feel like we're at a good cadence at the moment. Um, but just just like with the UI, just like with uh, character balance, just like with um, uh, DLC options, we're going to continue to revise and try new things. Uh, so we appreciate the feedback. We lurk on Discord. Um, let us know what you're thinking. Uh, and talk to us on the live stream, as you're obviously doing right now. Uh, we love interacting with the community, and we love hearing your feedback. So keep it coming. Uh, we're, we're having a ton of fun. Mars, does Azaka's ultimate give Kathris coins? That's a good question. Let's see if we can find out. Because I unlocked her. There she is. Oh, I should make this box bigger so you can see all four. Um, Erica, can you make that note that on the console UI for four or five slot champions, uh, we might need to make that box bigger. Uh, so Azaka, there she is. Do, do, do. I don't know why I'm hitting the buttons. All right. Uh, so Zaka's ultimate. Let's find. It's gonna be interesting. Let's find out. No. <laughs> Let's go to the next level and find out. Look at this. It's like we're QAing together. Isn't it awesome? Uh, oh no. Do your thing. Where's your tigers? Where'd the tigers go? Hmm. Apparently, because I clicked it right at the end of the boss level, um, it kind of glitched. So, yeah, we're going to look into that. Um, I don't know for sure whether Izaka's ultimate drops uh, Kathris Goobers, uh, because I haven't gone through my pass yet. Uh, I worked with Justin on the design, but he and the other devs implemented uh, Kathris and have been testing him. And uh, I'm going to be diving in now and uh, in the coming days so we can write the uh, champion spotlight for next week. Um, Magpie3 asks, when will the bug with enlarged text in the chat box when you visit the shop be fixed? This is the first I'm hearing about that bug, Magpie, so I would suggest um, creating a, a ticket in game about it. Uh, if you can include a screenshot, that'd be super helpful. And also what, if anything, you're doing to recreate that. So if you can recreate it, if it's like, it's always when uh, Bruno is in the formation and I uh, open up the chat box, I, I, don't, I don't know. Just uh, give us the all the info you have on it and we'll look into it. Because if there is enlarged text and it makes it really difficult to see, uh, we want to fix that. Let's see. Will Kathris get an alternate costume with his blindfold or weird gem eyes eventually? It's creeping me out seeing his original eyes. Um, that's a great question. Uh, he's not going to get a uh, an alternate costume with his adventure, um, but I'm positive that at some point we will be releasing uh, a skin for Kathris that either is his blindfold version or his many eyes version. Uh, right now he's wearing a mask of many faces, I think, that makes it look like he has regular eyes, but he actually has um, a gem, uh, a bunch of gems on his face that he can see through. Uh, and that was one of the requests from uh, Chris, is that he wanted the version of him. I had, I'd envisioned the version of him being the blindfold version, um, but he wanted the version with the mask of many faces, with his eyes, um, uh, so that when he cosplays him, that's how he can cosplay him. Because uh, something about super gluing 80 gems to his face didn't sound interesting. I don't know why. Uh, is there an update on the Android build of the game? I'm thinking about the thing where some mobile could play this, play the game, and after some time, they no longer could anymore. Uh, yes, the .dk. Uh, we uh, updated that. I want to say in mid-December. So let me give a little bit of background and explanation for players so they understand what's going on. So uh, when we released on iOS and Android, we released them for the tablet versions only, um, specifically because uh, we don't feel that the UI is good enough for a, a regular phone screen. There's just too much going on. Um, and it makes it really difficult to touch unless you're using a pen. You can do it, but... Um, 
uh, it's challenging, and we didn't want to we didn't want to release on a platform that we didn't have the best user experience for. Um, so when we released on uh, Android, I, iPad's easy because you can just select Android. But on Android, the way that they delineate the different versions, because you know how there's like a thousand different Android devices, is it's all about screen size. There's extra large, large, normal, and small. Um, and tablets are considered large and extra large. Now the problem came in uh, with the Note 9 players. Something happened with the metadata, and I believe it was um, Samsung updating their system so that they had things correct, but the Note 9 devices changed from an, a large screen to a normal screen. And what that meant was when we sent the next update out, all the Note 9 players that went to update it found out that they couldn't. The, the, uh, the app said that it wasn't valid on their device. So we got some emails, we did some research, and we honestly had a lot of long conversations about what the best thing to do was. Um, we don't think that it's great on smaller screens. We don't think that the UI is great. We think that it needs some work. Um, and we're really cognizant of player experience. We want we want people to have fun playing our game. Um, and what's the worst kind of, what's worse than being able to play the game and then suddenly not? Um, so after, after some long discussions, we decided to open the game up on Android devices for normal size screens. Now, both on the store and in the game, we give a warning that the game is optimized for tablet screens, but we have opened it up to smaller screens because we hear that feedback a lot from a lot of our players. They're like, why can't I play it on my device? Why can't I play it on the phone? And mostly that's because we want you to have the best user experience. Um, and so we'd prefer you play it on a tablet from a mobile standpoint. We're out on Steam, we're out on Xbox, iOS, uh, Xbox, PlayStation, iPads, and previously Android tablets. Now, all Android devices that aren't considered a small screen. Uh, so we basically have extended it one tier. So if you've got a larger Android device, check it out in the store. Um, see what you think about the UI and the play. Um, and then... Uh, Hopefully you can have some fun with it. But all the Note 9 players that were previously locked out of the game, we are so, 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 so sorry. Uh, it was never our intention to do that. Um, and we appreciated everyone that let us know because it clued us into the issue. And uh, it may have been other devices besides Note 9, uh, but the Note 9 players were the ones that we heard the most from. Um, so we've opened that back up. So if you were uh, blocked by that, uh, open it back up and, uh, and check it out. Um, and if you have a larger... Uh, phone uh, that's an Android, check out the game. Uh, we think that it's better with a uh, tablet, but with your specific phone size screen, because normal screens do have a wide range, uh, you might be good to go and you might be able to start a brand new Idle Champions adventure on your phone. Uh, perfect for bus rides. <laughs> Uh, do you have a rough idea when the next really hard mission is coming out? I'm asking about an Azaka release type pre-tanking and healing update. Um, the new one, Sleuth It Out, uh, requires int of 13 or higher, and I can tell you it's a little challenging. Uh, it'll be easier when Kathris comes in because he'll, uh, he'll be above that threshold. Um, but we are, we are considering a bunch of new content, uh, and again, we try to mix our content up between content for new players and content for uh, end game players. Um, and I wanna add more challenging variants. Um, now, that's not to say that uh, the goal of challenging variants is the difficulty level of Azaka pre-tanking and healing. Um, I think we can find a better balance than that. Um, but uh, yeah, unlocks for... Um, Unlocks for Dragon Bait uh, when he becomes an unlockable champion in the Chult Adventure. Um, that that'll be a challenging variant. Uh, evergreen variants are meant to be evergreen champion unlock variants are meant to be super challenging um, because we want it to be a goal. We want it to be something that you have to work through. We don't want you to have to if you're if you're an end game level player. We don't want you to just turn it on and just skate through and and get a character. And so that's why you saw that unlocking Dritz was really hard when we first started. And as you've leveled up, as you've uh, gotten more gear, now it's a lot easier for players. Um, now for newer players on Xbox and PlayStation, it'll take a little time to be able to unlock Dritz, but we've got plenty of content to keep you busy in the meantime. Uh, Waterdeep is going to get very crowded as you add more missions. Any plan for an expanded city map to place missions on? 
Excuse me. We have discussed that. Um, it's a lower priority issue at the moment, but we are looking into um, ways that we can more uh, ways that we can better immerse you in the city of Waterdeep. Uh, you're right that there's going to be a lot of missions in Waterdeep, especially in the Dragon Heist campaign. Most, if not all of them, will be in Waterdeep. Um, so if we can break out to a map, that's uh, that's great. Um, but we also we also don't want to overuse that because we don't want to um, make the map a little too difficult to grok. Um, so we're looking into ways to to make it a little bit easier and a, and a better way to show off the city. And maybe a sub map is one of those. Um, that's one of the options we've discussed. Uh, is there a timetable on a fix for damage boost resulting in a loss of DPS? I'm going to need some more uh, detail on that, uh, Tovadon. Uh, if you could open up a ticket in-game and send that detail to us. Uh, what boosts resulted in a loss of DPS? Who was in your uh, formation? Did you have any buffs active? Uh, the more info you can give us on that, the better, and uh, we will get right to it. Um, for those that um, had some challenges with the new adventures and the lightning strikes, uh, even when you've turned flashing off, uh, we think we have a fix for that. And the next time we do a rollout with a new build, uh, we'll have that uh, updated for you. Uh, question from Epic Gizmo 519 Will these skins also get portraits? <sighs> I think so. Um, we've discussed it. Uh, there's a challenge in that those painted portraits take quite a while, um, a lot more a lot more time than actually drawing the champion. Um, so with the main UI, it's easy to show the the new uh, skin in the portrait because it's just a screenshot of the character uh, that we already had to draw to put it in the game. But to add a new painted um, uh, portrait of the characters if they have their skins on uh, or costumes on uh, is a little bit more challenging and time consuming and. Uh, we're still having a debate on whether we're going to do that or not. My only hesitation with doing that is I don't want it to lead to too much overhead on skins. Right now, skins are fairly easy to turn around when we have cycles. Um, but if we add uh, if we add a new portrait for the the skin, I think it's better. Um, but I don't want to get to a point where we can't do a skin because we don't have time to do the portrait. Um, so that's an ongoing discussion in the in on the team. Uh, can we have a three cream or any Athos race hero, please? Uh, we're looking to expand our race selection. Um, in the Forgotten Realms, uh, humans are more ubiquitous than all other races, um, but uh, we are looking to expand. We want to have a Goliath. We want to have a Triton. We want to have. We want to eventually uh, have a, a player character or a character for all player character races. So we've got a Kobold. We've got to get a Goblin. We've got to get. We, we've still got a long way to go, but you know what? We've got a lot of years left to, uh, to bring all these characters out. So we're going to keep mixing it up between lore characters and streaming characters. We're going to uh, try to get a good variety of races and classes in there. And uh, we're going to continue to listen to feedback. So if, wow, that was a long question that Erica just dropped in. <sighs> Let's see. Does Arcan usurp the Shadow Demon? No, I do not believe so, uh, because specifically Arcan uh, is talking about formation-based abilities, uh, like um, adjacency or within two spaces, and the Shadow Demon is specifically targeting DPS level of champions. Um, I may be wrong, but uh, that's where I think right now. Uh, what engine do we use? We use Unity. Uh, question from Giant Dwarf. Can we get new familiar functionality to click auto progress back online, let's say 1 slash 15 minutes? Can we get a new familiar functionality to click auto progress back online? Um, maybe, but that seems really patchy. What I'd rather do is... Um, is fix the the auto progress issue so it won't stop. Right now we're chasing a bug that causes uh, auto progress to stop on boss levels, and I believe that's where Giant Dwarf suggestion is coming from. And I would rather fix the bug than create a new system to solve for the bug. Uh, so that's that's our approach at the moment. Um, 
but you never know when we revamp the familiar functionality, maybe that's something we'll add back in if we think there's functionality beyond the, the bug issue. Uh, will we be able to get formation saves for familiars? Yes. Yes, you will. I promise it's on our list. Uh, we will attempt to prioritize it shortly. Um, in the meantime, for those playing on Steam, uh, there's a really cool hotkey that you can use that Jacob put into the game, where if you press and hold F, uh, you can click the different formation areas. So I can kind of cheat it here. But you see how the circles pop up? So if you have familiars, you can hold down F and just click the different areas and put the champion and put the familiars there. Come on, there you are. Hey, Iris. How you doing, buddy? And can we move? Yeah, we're going to move that over. All right. Trying to get through the rest of the questions before the end. Uh, those evergreen champions getting a once over anytime soon, they're still not great. Azaka just isn't great DPS. Well, Azaka's pretty good at gold fine farming, as far as I know. Um, not everyone's going to be the best at everything they do, but we are constantly looking at characters to um, revamp and rebalance. Um, normally our threshold is the big rebalancing section, so like the tanking and healing update, all the tanks and the healers got a rebalance about two months ago. Uh, we're targeting a uh, larger group in the coming months to do another big rebalance pass on. Um, and uh, Dritz and uh, some of the year one event champions would be included in that. Um, and so that's that's the plan. Uh, I can tell you that uh, Regis is not getting an update for midwinter, and that's mostly just due to bandwidth. Uh, we came back after the new year. We're uh, working with two new platforms and rolling out um, content on a weekly basis, and we want to make sure that we hit our targets on every single platform. We don't want to get to the world unless there's an emergency where we say, play win midwinter now, except not on Steam because we had some weird issues. So we're working hard to get into that new uh, timeline now with uh, the approval process on the new platforms. Um, and as we, as we get better at that, uh, we're going to open up our ability to uh, continue to inject those uh, quality of life updates. When is Delina's rework? Delina's rework is one of my first targets on that uh, redesign pass because I want to get also get the uh, Delina DLC pack out. Uh, we've held off on doing Delina Golden Epics because we know that for a while that she's been needing a, a revamp. So uh, Delina's rework is coming, I promise. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, Mars question, any update on when and if we'll be able to replay variants, even if it's for no reward at all, it's just the most fun part of the game. Not being able to freely play the most fun part of the game is frustrating. Mars, I agree with you, um, but we want to, we want to have, we want to have a system in place that, uh, rewards you for redoing those variants, honestly. Um, there is a pathing issue right now if we just let you replay the variants, um, one, we, we have discussions on it. Um, we have a plan in place. It's just finding time to slot it into the schedule. But I promise you, we are planning on having a system where you will be able to replay variants. Uh, There is a small note from Faramir12, and I'm going to flag that for Erica to send to me because it is detailed and confusing, and I can't parse it right now, uh, but I want to make sure it's not lost. So Faramir12, your comment has been noted. Um, please send this to me in Mattermost so I can address it. All right. Uh, so we are getting towards the end of our time. Um, and, uh, so there's some things I want to talk about. Uh, let's see, where's my list? Where's my list of things I want to talk about? Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Uh, so right now, everyone can play through the new content in, uh, Tomb of Annihilation. We've unlocked two new adventures, two new variants. Uh, these, these are the final two, or for now, the final two adventures in the, uh, in the Tomb of Annihilation campaign. 
Uh, we are heading our way back up towards Port Nyanzaru. Uh, we're helping our new friends, Artists and Dragon Bait, uh, unlock the secrets of the lost city of Mesro. And uh, we have what you all will hopefully feel is an epic final boss fight that will be worthy of all the Kelimvor uh, favor you've been working on. Uh, additionally, while it's our final new adventure, we're still going to be putting out variants, especially difficult variants in the Chult campaign. Uh, so look for those in the coming weeks and months. Um, and uh, for those that have read into it at the end, um, we want to unlock Dragon Bait as a champion. Um, no ETA on that timeline yet. Uh, Pack South. Next week is Pack South. Starting on Friday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 10 to 6, we will be at PAX South down in San Antonio, Texas. Come give us a chat. Uh, I'm going to be there. Michelle Papadopoulos, one of our artists, is going to be there, and so will Eric Jordan. Uh, so if you see a ginger man with a beard and a kilt, uh, go say hi, because I'm sure he wants to chat with you about uh, what you love and don't love and uh, would love to see an Idol Champions. Uh, and come by the booth. We'll have coloring pages. We'll have postcards to give out. Uh, Michelle's going to be drawing caricatures of your character as your favorite D&D &D class. Um, so we think we've got a really compelling, uh, fun thing to do with the booth. So we want you to come by, chat with us. Uh, we're going to be selling Idle Champions t-shirts with, uh, with our friends over at Toon Hounds and Idle Champions mouse mats. These guys that you can buy at Four Fans by Fans. Uh, they're very large, so plenty of room for your coffee cup. Um, and, uh, yeah, come by. Uh, we may even have some of our really cool black idol champions dice if you swing by one of the signings with, uh, some of our champion characters. So we're going to have signings for, excuse me, dice camera action. Uh, uh, Acquisitions Inc. is going to have a signing. Uh, Chris Straub is going to have a signing at his booth. Uh, and we'll have the schedule up at the booth. So swing by the booth, write down the schedule, go meet your favorite uh, content creators, uh, get a cool uh, uh, character card to unlock them, get a die, um, and come chat us up. Uh, we're really excited to meet everyone in person. I'm excited because I haven't been to a PAX in forever. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, we have official merch now on uh, for fans by fans um you can uh, pick up your own idol champion shirt idol champions hoodie I'm still waiting for mine to come into the office i'm very excited about it um but yeah if you want to if you want to rep idol champions for fans by fans um i think that's everything uh we've got the um the code today for a free supply chest for those of you uh on steam uh meet us at pack south uh, for those of you not on Steam, we are we have a proposal into the various platforms on ways to have codes uh, on all platforms. So for those of you on Xbox and PlayStation, I know that uh, you're frustrated that you can't use our stream code that we have for Steam, but do, do know that we do have a plan in place, and as soon as we uh, flesh that out with all of our different partners so that everyone's on board, uh, we will be able to roll that out so that we can give you guys more free goodies. Um, so thanks for hanging with us. Thanks for hanging with me. Sorry for the technical difficulties. That's what you get when you uh, have Chris do the stream instead of Dylan. Um, again, Dylan's away because he's not feeling well, uh, but he should be back in the office on Monday, back on the Q&A on Tuesday, and right here uh, complaining about how I turned all the dials on his things. Um, so thank you so much for being with us. Thank you to Erica and Clive who've been moderating our Mixer and Twitch chat. Uh, and thanks to the rest of the team over at Codename. Uh, this is this is my first year here at Codename in the lovely Vic Vancouver Island on Canada. Um, and the team uh, welcomed me with open arms and uh, has really made me feel like part of the family. And I couldn't be more happy to be here working on Idol Champions with all of them and for all of you. So uh, keep playing, keep unlocking, uh, keep uh, adventuring and saving the world. And uh, we'll see you at PAX South next week. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>